Um, uh, my name is Mark Tonga, and I'm a C3, C4 quadriplegic, 12 years post-injury. It's um, I'm really pleased to be with you again, Mark. You and I have known each other, I don't know, maybe 10 years now, maybe not that long, five, six years, and... Uh, uh, so journeys together. Indeed, yeah, it's really encouraging when you're with a friend and you get to hear each other's stories, so... Uh, so your injury was 12 years ago, Mark. What was the date? Yeah, we all know our dates. That's like a new birthday. It is. Yeah, it's uh, 13th of May. Right. 2008. Okay. And um, so you were how old at that point in time? I'm about 35. Uh, so what was your life like at that point? What was your sort of passions and interests? And Yeah, look, um, I just finished. Uh, I was on my professional year as an accountant. Um, uh, just playing sports, I'd be uh, living with a partner, preparing to get married. Uh, but um, yeah, life was just motoring along, you know, no real purpose. Just trying to fill in time, I guess, you know. Yeah. I think reflecting back, um, at that moment you're just, yeah, just reacting and, yeah, just <laughs> living for the day and, yeah, no real, um, you know, no real goal, just. A double garage and a nice car, I think yeah, that's all we want to at that time, you know. The Australian fun. dream. <laughs> yeah. So how did you incur your injury? Uh, just through, um, uh, I played um, semi-professional rugby uh, and um, playing with uh, people half my age. Yeah, I should have retired, but yeah, and uh, just uh, on on. on 13th of May, you know, it was just any other day, turned up to training. We had a very good season, very good uh, you know, atmosphere in the club, very competitive, and uh, just going through one of my drills that I usually do, done a million times, because of pick and drive. And uh, I think just got a bit enthusiastic in that time and ended up uh, on a tackle where my neck was under my chin, uh, pushed in the, which I sustain my injury, yeah. Just an everyday training and suddenly life changes. Yes, so um, yeah. At that moment, I thought I'd be home in about a week. You know, so I thought, oh, well, I'm broken every bone in my body, so I was no stranger to hospitals. And I wasn't familiar with spinal injury, and you know, I didn't panic. I just thought, oh, I'd just go through the process, get to hospital, do what they have to do, and yeah. And I'll be home in about a month or so and back to doing the same things. But then as the night wore on and as the weeks wore on, you know, reality starts to uh, get clearer. Mm. Things, it's, yeah. it's interesting, isn't it? Because we all sort of think, oh, I'm going to be one of these guys who walks out of hospital who recovers completely. Did you think that? My com I think my thinking didn't get that far, you know, like I think I didn't really understand the nature of, of a spinal injury. Yeah. Uh, it would have been about probably six months or so, yeah, till I had that conversation with myself. But I, you know, for me, you know, being um, you know, less knowledgeable about this sort of injury, it was like, yeah, yeah, in a month I'll be home, yeah, you know, running around as usual. So, yeah. so yours is a C three injury. Yes. Um, what just for those who are unfamiliar, what what does that mean? You from the cervical, uh, from right at top is. The cervical one. Yeah. So from the third, between my three and four cervical uh, bone on my on my bone, on my neck, yeah. uh, it's been bruised and damaged. You know, not completely dislocated like many people think. Like, oh, you break a neck. You know, it's like pieces. No, it's you know the nature of the injury is that uh, yeah, it's been heavily bruised and and probably dislocated a little bit, and that contributes to the injury. So. Yeah. But what what uh, what level can you see? So you can move. You can't move your arms or so hands. Yeah, it's or, uh, from C three. It's um, just a neck down. Yeah, neck down. I've got no no feeling or movement. Yeah. So from a C three four, that's your your arms, your diaphragm, lungs, breathing. Uh, so I was um, uh, I was pretty blessed that um, if my fitness uh, wasn't ventilated. So I had to fight hard to uh, breathe and and uh, learn to breathe again, and that kind of like tipped me over to uh, to uh, 
being not ventilated, but I did. So there could be other people with your level of injury who need a ventilator. Yes, yes, uh, yeah, I would have, uh, yeah, I would have uh, been walking around the machine, but. Uh, uh, Do you I find it hard to breathe? Yes, yes. No, I was think I was more concerned about breathing than walking in that time. I think, um, yeah, because I was so close to like, yeah, yeah. Uh, I died a couple of times, so you know, for me, breathing was yeah, the priority. Yeah. And moving before moving my arms or walking. Yeah. When breathing is hard, you um, walking secondary. Yeah, yeah. You just you know the first six months, yeah, you know, and the first three years, breathing was a priority. Yeah. You know, four, yeah, you know, four years, yeah. You know. yeah. So walking was like yeah. You know, People go, oh, I can't see you, can't wait till you walk. And I'm like, oh, yeah, me too. <laughs> Sucking in those oxygens, yeah. So it was, yeah, yeah until, yeah. It's such a big change, isn't it, in life? How did you cope with the grief and loss? Or did you not cope with a while? What was the sort of, so how did you cope with the grief and the loss? And what was the impact on you? Certainly in those For me, years? I think, um, I think it was because I was so concentrated on breathing and staying alive, I didn't have time to grieve. And if I did, it was only for a brief moment. Yeah. And, you know, and uh, it was just been staying alive for me. Yeah, and un until I was comfortable to breathe, you know, because don't forget, you know, I was going to be ventilated. So I was sucking in those, you know, the first three years I was in hospital, four years I was in hospital, pneumonia, every every winter you know so i so you know, the conversation about walking and being in a chair was like secondary it was like yeah i've got to get over this yeah this blocks yeah yeah staying alive man, you know like yeah for me that was it but then when i got my breathing back you know whenever i get a bit of, of time or break i did think about the loss but then it was like reality snapped in and you know i just breathing again but you know, now my breathing is fine and so have you do you experience grief today do you, have you continue well, to yeah, grieve well, the loss? once I got my breathing you know, maintained which was probably the second second year uh, I, then I arrived home and, and I think yeah, then I had time to grieve uh, just fell into a depression for a little bit yeah. yeah, and my my partner, yeah, the things at home weren't you know, weren't stable, so I had a lot of things happening, yeah, to do. So with. you were in a relationship, you said, yeah. um, getting toward marriage, and then the spinal cord injury hit you, and that relationship lasted. No, unfortunately, uh, uh, we parted ways about you know uh, my second, you know, second year, you know, when I was arrived home, so. Yeah. And you think that was the relationship itself, or that really was one of the effects of the spinal cord injury, the challenges of living with the injury? It was a culmination, yeah. I think the, the spinal tipped it over. Um, it, was, it was just, yeah, it's just a lot of stress, a lot of um, yeah, uncertainty. Um, uh, many, many things were involved in, but um, you know, mainly, you know, pre-injury stuff, yeah, kind of brought it over to my injury and my injury just amplified everything, yeah, like, I think there were fractures there in, before my my um, my injury and the injury just amplified everything, yeah, it's just, you know, it's like tipping water into a jug and you can start seeing the leaks, yeah, yeah. and that was like, and, and uh, you know, she was, uh, God bless her, she was, yeah, and I don't blame her, but uh, at that moment in time, I was just like, you yeah, know, I need you now, you know. <laughs> I need you, you know, don't go. But, uh, but then, you know, yeah. it is what it is. And, uh, yeah. So you were dealing with the loss of spinal cord injury, the loss of um, a relationship, um, feeling pretty down. Oh, yeah. I was, uh, yeah. Uh, I've been, and then I had a couple operations, yeah. Cause my, my lungs were filling up with water. I had to you know, go in and get my lung stitched up. Had a tear in my lung. Yeah. Uh, had a pressure sore, which left me in bed for nine months. So, 
Yeah, I don't really know. <laughs> it's sort of, I mean, I can picture it, but knowing you now for the last, you know, five or six years, you are such a positive person. You live the big life in many ways. What, what was the transition for you? How did you move from that really um, tough few years to... Um, I had to know, change my environment. I had to change, I had to extricate myself out of there, out of the, uh, my house, which brought me a lot of memories, uh, the area, which brought me a lot of memories, my family, and moving here, you know, and allowed me to, you know, to start again, reborn again, you know? and it didn't mean it was over, it's just like removing myself from, you know, from my old life, you know, and, and the reminders, you know, of what it was, and I think um, I picked up the phone and I, you know, I called you know, SCIA peer support, and I said, "Look, I'm looking for a place to move. You know, like at night, I need 24-hour care, and like, the government couldn't provide that for me. And I had my family members who were obligated, you know, and I just didn't want no no one, you know, being a burden to me, and I just wanted to." You know, Everyone just felt like they had to be you know, looking after me. And I was an independent man, you know, like 35 years, you know, like, you know, mowed the lawn, you know, did everything. And now I'm, you know, at the mercy of people, you know, like, and it, it wasn't good for my spirit. It wasn't good for my psyche, you know. So, yeah, praise the Lord, you know, like, you know, there was, there was an opening at this house here in Chatswood. And I came here. Yeah. And this was a shithole because, yeah, this wasn't like this, but I'll tell you that's another story. And, you yeah, know, North Shore, you know, I grew up in the West, you know, West, uh, uh, bought a house at Fairfield and I grew out there and I just, this was another, like another country. During the snobs on the no on north of the bridge, mate. <laughs> I didn't realise where I was, I just like, you know, I've been here once, but yeah. But I just need, just like, I need another, you know. You so I moved here and, you know, about 10 years ago. <laughs> and made new friends and just, you know, left my old life behind and, you know. Mm. And um, started rebuilding, you know. Yeah, that's great. So when you think about that rebuilding, are there any sort of positive changes or what is the personal growth that you've experienced? Um, sort of despite your injury or because of your injury or through the challenges that you've had? Oh, I looked down, um, you know, and, uh, a lot of, a lot of changes, you know. For me, you know, I, was, I, I managed to, you know, through the grace of God, you know, like grow stronger spiritually, go stronger mentally, but not physically. And, you know, and um, it does not mean I'm there, it just means... But uh, I'm working on it every day, you know. I'm aware of it. You know, many people saying, you know, like, I can't wait to your walk, but I was walking, but I was spiritually broken, you know, and mentally depleted, you know, but physically awake, you know. And I thought to myself, no, I'm, I'm comfortable. I'm physically broken, but, you know, mentally strong, and my mind is even, you know. And those two, I think it's worth more than being physically yeah, awakened, you know, like it's, you know, it's just like an you know, empty vessel, man. How many people you walk out on the road, man, you know, just walking around like zombies, man, yeah? Just, you know, I go down chats for man, you know, just looking around, man, you know, all zombies, man, you know. Like. So it's very intriguing. So, so you've, you were spiritually, mentally broken, and now you're the opposite. So what's, how has that transition occurred? What, what is it that's um, enabled you to, yeah, heal spiritually and mentally? Well, look, you know, I, you know as you probably you know, you know, gathered, I'm, you know, I'm a man of faith. And I, I grew up in the church when I was young. And you know, my grandmother used to drag me to church, kicking and screaming. <laughs> you know, when they, you know, they babysit, you know, and that was part of my grandmother and grandfather. You know, that was their, 
routine. Yeah. Are you Tongan, mate? Yes, I am. Yeah, Tongan so, family. Tongan Tong family. So, family yeah. I immigrated here and uh, my family came here when I was 13. So, yeah. you know, I find memories growing up with my parents and my grandparents. Like everyone else, they just take any grandparents and leave you there. And, yeah, it was great times. Yeah. And they had a routine, my grandmother. Five o'clock church, church every you know, Monday, Wednesday, Methodist. You know, Sundays, Sundays, you know, okay, you know, they mission, were missionaries, you know. So I grew up in that foundation, you know, like, you know, you know they were great examples for me. And being a young, you know, five-year-old, seven-year-old, you don't grasp, you know, what it's all about. You just, you know, gradually go along with the journey, you know, but... Forced to church. But the spiritual in you know, the words that, you know, that come through without your knowledge, feeding your spirit, it's, you know, you can't measure it. You know, and, you know Sunday school, you know. So I had to, like, dig deep down to those things, those memories, you know. And, um... You know, she prayed for my soul, and I used to, I used to say to her, look, you know, why do you waste your time praying for me? And she said, oh, it's my prayers that's keeping me alive. And, you know, it always, you know, always resonated with me, that one. Yeah. It's my prayers that's keeping you guys alive. Yeah. You know, she used to supplicate herself for us. And, and you know, like, um, you know, I, I got to Australia, and, you know, just, you know, Big lights, King's Cross, everything just, you know, light up at a young boy who's just come from a third world country where there's nothing going and, you know, you just muck around and, you know, I fell off the tracks, basically. And, you know, just did whatever I wanted, lived in pride, lived in the ego and didn't listen to my parents and, you know, did my own thing. But my heart always yearned about going back to, you know, you know back to the, you know, to that place of peace, that place, you know, where my grandmother found, you know, like, half of me always yearned, but the other half was, no, you're all right, you know. <laughs> you're all right, and, and, you know, up to my, up to my stages, it just, you know, I just, you know, I can't live like this, I need to, you know, I need to, Posture myself, reposition myself back to you, to those times you now where. So the spinal cord injury sort of forced you to think about these things in a way that it hadn't before, or gave you the opportunity to think about these things. Talking about amplifying things, yeah, you know, it just slowed me right down, made me reprioritize, and you know, having an encounter in my coma, you know, with a spiritual ill. Yeah. God, you encountered God or the spirit. Yeah, in your I had a spiritual you know, encounter in my coma. Yeah. yeah. And um, yeah, as as I said, I died you know, a couple of times. Yeah. Yeah, because it was, yeah, the C three is your lungs, yeah, and breathing you know, was a problem for me. Yeah, two and three. So the first, you know, first month in ICU was just. Everything and trying to get me to breathe. Yeah, I like. Yeah. I, I don't know about you, but I was in a coma for yeah, the first two weeks. You know, so just you know, my body was just slowly shutting down. You know, like yeah. And in that time, you know, I made my spiritual encounter. You know, I, I met some yeah. Uh, I met a. You know, I had an encounter, and in that exchange. Yeah, you know, I came out of it. Um, I could have gone either way. Uh, I was in this light, and around me was just pitch black dark. Yeah, you know? and this darkness was just calling me. Yeah, you know, like you know, calling me, and and I was really lonely, and I was really afraid. Yeah, you know? and there was this light. It was very comforting. You know, but then I, was, I needed someone to be you know, to hold my hand. Yeah, you know? like. And the dark voice and the voice in the dark was just like calling me, come, you know, very soothing, comforting, you know. But I knew the light was safe. And you know, I knew it. And you know, I just innate, you know, deep down and, <clears throat> and just someone just said, look, you know, if you move, you know, 
just stay here, just, you'll be all right. You know? and, but that, you know, that soothing call, I was just too good to be true, you know. Yeah. And the praises, you know, when I, when I managed to get through that encounter and I didn't go, I decided to, you know, when I woke up, that if I, you know, I said, Lord, you know, if you get me out of this, I'll give my life to you, you know, like, I will follow your ways. Just <laughs> give me another go, you know, I'm not ready to go. Yeah. I'm not ready to die. I want to, you know, I want to, like, you know, just give me another chance to, you know, and we talk about works and stuff like that in the book, but, yeah. But I, I wanted to do something that, you know, that will, you know, turn my life around, yeah? yeah. And that was one of the main keys for me to, yeah, you know, of getting over this thing was, yeah, you know, that promise and that, yeah, you know, exchange I had because I was, yeah, you know, saved by that, yeah, you know, moment. And, you know, like you can call it whatever you call it, but for me, I know what it is. Yeah, I'm not ashamed to say what it is, yeah. You know, and, you know, I didn't see no faces, I didn't see, but it was, yeah. You know, it was, yeah, special to me. Yeah, that's beautiful. The idea that uh, you encounter the spirit in crisis is uh, a lovely, and obviously for you, a life-changing experience. Yeah, and, you know, coming out, yeah. Then I, I spent you know, the first five years of my life and you know, I reprogramming my mind, you know, I'm trying to like, not trying to do things, but just reprogram my spirit, reprogram my thoughts, you know, because I told you, you know, like, I fell off the tracks, and those thoughts and things are still in you, you know, like, you know, yeah. so you have to cleanse that out of you, and that, I think that helped me with my journey as on the chair, because I had a mission, I had a purpose, you know, it wasn't go out and evangelize, anything, it was just you know, live your life and, you know. Develop your own character. Mm, yes, yes. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, and grew, you know. And, and still growing, still growing. Not there yet, but yeah. yeah. It's interesting, isn't it? So um, you think about the positive impact of um, the injury on your meaning and purpose, and we'll come back to that. But what about negatively? Can you think of, did, did the injury negatively impact on your meaning and purpose in life? Or no, not? no. Because you don't, you didn't really feel like you had a strong meaning and purpose before the injury, is that, or you'd lost the meaning and purpose? So, well, look, um, I think it made me just, you know, value life and value everything. You know? Yeah. I did not, you know, value and and brought me closer to, you know, to uh, to walk in the path. Yeah, you know? it's something that I I, I I yearned to do, but yeah, you know, didn't know how to. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I think it was just laziness and, and yeah, and I think, you know, this way, um, but I don't think there's anything negative. I think um, it's the best thing that's happened to me. Yeah, yeah. it's the best thing that's happened to me, and I say that, yeah. You know, like, um, I don't say it because I, I, I have troubles. Yes, you know, I have troubles, you know, pain and you know, all that stuff. But, you know, spiritually and mentally, you know, how, how, how better off I am. I think, you know, it's, um, yeah. And how I progressed in life, you know, and the people I met along the journey. It was a beautiful journey. You know, I met so many good friends, lost many friends, but, you know, the friends I've made, you know, even much better, you know. Yeah. And, um, you know, for me, I think it was a beautiful journey for me. And there were times of the you know, pain and things, and I don't think about, you know, you know what could have or what not, you know. Never did. I just gotta say, well, I gotta make this, yeah. I gotta make it happen. Figure out a way to make it happen. Just do it. <laughs> it's, um, I mean, it's an extraordinary thing to sit here and and uh, and I know you, so I believe you. But I, I can just imagine people watching this and thinking, goodness yeah, me, yeah. look at the I level of his injury. And, and, and uh, um, yeah, yeah. And it is what it is, you know. It is what it is, and it's like, you know, like I see people running, but hey, you know, like. There's things I can do that they can't do. I can run, but yeah, but you know, yeah, it's just finding what I can do, doing good, you know. Like, uh, so, what does make life meaningful for you then today? What do you um, get up in the morning for? What are you passionate about? Oh, I get up in the morning. I thank God He's given me another day to get up. <laughs> That's true. And 
but now I'm, you know, I mean, I found I found myself working. I, I'm in, um, you know, in disability policy, and you know, like uh, uh, I work, uh, you know, in that space. I study now. You know, so you're doing a business masters. Yeah, I'm doing an MBA at the uh, University of New South Wales. Yeah, you know, I got a scholarship. You know, to do it. You know, eighty-six thousand dollars of it. Yeah. <laughs> so. You've had you've um, had um, connections, lots of political connections, including with our current premier, for example. Well, she's like she's my local member, so I do that. Tell us one or two of your your successes dealing with um, well, you know, with Gladys. So with you know, people think you know, like I know her personally. It's great having her as my local member yeah. because you know I'm a voting member, so I go knock knock. Hey, Gladys, yeah. I voted for you, so yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah. One of the stories that interests me that people might like to hear about is the local train station. Yeah, look, you know, and, uh, you know um, I had a friend who lived down at our time and, and uh, she drives a chair up here to Chatswood, yeah, to uh, do shopping or she has to drive to St. Leonard's next station down. And there's no lifts to the station, so I was like, oh, well, yeah, you know, let's we'll see what we can do. So. I got my carers all stood down there with a board and pen and gathered some signatures and we managed to yeah, collectively gather about 10,000 signatures, yeah? not me but other people too and and we took it to Gladys and you know, Gladys was, hey, I've got 10,000 of my constituents here who could kick me out of, yeah? <laughs> kick me out of Parliament in the, in the next election yeah? and it amplified and uh, you know, we said, look, yeah. Yeah, good idea to put a lift here. Yeah? The policy is they put a lift every second station or big stations, yeah. At the time it's not a really big station, but and yeah, all the stars were aligned, praise God, and uh, she put a lift in and uh, I don't know, I've only used it once. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's really interesting. Anything else that you're sort of passionate about, Mark? That Yeah, well, but, uh, it's just you know I think it's just navigating the, I found it difficult to um, to navigate the system. And when I came out of my interest, another thing I had to deal with was finding my way through the, you know, the bureaucratic system to get you know, support from me. And I found that really challenging. And I'm like, yeah, I think I've got a bit of a brain, yeah. But and I thought, if I find this difficult, you know, who else will find it difficult? And yeah. so I, yeah, you know, I, I did a bit of a volunteer work as an advocate, and yeah, you know, did that for about a year or two. Found out that. The matters were pretty common, you know, like, you know, all it needed was some systemic changes, policy changes. So I thought, why am I wasting my time down here putting out fires, mate? I need to climb a bit higher. <laughs> climb a bit higher and tug someone's tail and say, hey, you know. So I, for me personally, I think, you know, if one thing's changed, you need to climb, you know, get closer to the, you know, to the sun, mate, right, or power makers and, like, nudge them and annoy them to change, you know these um, uh, legislate or whatever systems here yeah, and that will flow downstream and help those to, so I've been doing that for the last you know 10 years and it yeah, became good at it so so and then now I had to go to school you know just to improve my skills in that area so I'm doing an MBA just to give me a little bit more you know, you know some tools you know some suites of tools to go and battle these you know, bureaucrats here you know, who are yeah. Are you enjoying the study? Oh yeah, I love my studies. I'm, you know, it's, um, Expanding the mind is another great way of um, yeah. finding more meaning and purpose. And yeah, more, more importantly, it's an area where no, none, you know, the only person with disability was someone who was deaf, and the bureaucrats had to deal with at uni. I just thought, man, it was very difficult, you know. But then I thought, you know, I just thought there's going to be hundreds of other people with disability coming after me. So if I back down from this fight, yeah. So now I'm pushing. I'm just pushing it because half of it to you know reach my goal, but also just for the point of yeah, of saying yeah, to you know to be you know, a mentor to other people with disability that you know you can come through you know, and will teach these university people to start having their systems in place you know. And the arguments I have to have with these people is just like yeah, it's just like sport you know like <laughs> yeah. You gotta reprogram these people, you know, like you know, science is pushing people like me out the door of hospitals. You know, they're making us live longer. 
So I think you know the government and the community and you know, the attitudes. Yeah, you know, it's time to shift with that. Yeah. You know, and you know, golden of the days twenty years ago, when they used to you know hide people like you and I in in nursing homes. Yeah, and tell to us tell us to wash the paint dry. You know, we might have ink broken bodies, but our mind still functions. You now we still got something to do. Yeah. To, you know, we've got value, we can add to the community, we can add to the economy. Pay taxes, you pay taxes, I pay taxes. You know, we, 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 might, we can add value, we're not useless. You know, they tell us in hospital and all these people that, you know, just go home and you're going to die soon, you know. That's not a conversation we should be telling people. We say, look, yeah, you know, you can still do things, you know. Uh, they've got to change the narrative in hospitals and rehabs. You know, give people hope. You know, not these. Oh, you know, I had a doctor whisper in my ear, my, you know, when I was a go, like, oh, it's a shame. Oh, I bet you were a stellar rugby player, but you won't be walking. And I was in my coma. I said, "You prick! I'm going to come back and show you." I'm you like, know? <laughs> you know, like, yeah. but I didn't say that on purpose because I was like, yeah, motivated you. No, it's just like, you know, like I see who you are. Where are you? <laughs> it's interesting, Mark, because one of the things I love about you is um, you're a positive person, but you're also a fighter. And well, it's just like, you know, what right does he have to whisper in my ear? Like, yeah. all the million things in the English vocabulary he could have said, <laughs> yeah. he could have just like said something nice. Yeah. You know, like, you know, the power of words, you know? And it goes for rehab, it goes for everything. You know, we've got to, we've got to change the narrative of how we are. Now, life is life. As long as you still got breath, you know, you can still contribute. That's great. When you think about your um, your own personal development, your sort of character, your strengths, and um, and you look back at who you've become, um, what are you most proud of about yourself, uh, about what you've you know, yeah, about your self-development, about about the person you are today. I think oh, I'm just proud that I, you know, I just got up every day and just did things, you know. You just got to get up, you know. Get up, that's a, that's a, that's a goal. You know, get in the chair, that's a goal. Everything's a goal. You know, having someone to tell you, that's a goal. You know, and people look at the big things and go, oh, you know, but every little thing I achieve is a goal and I celebrate it, you know? And you know, I just look at the little things, all the little things all add up to big things, you know? So I think I'm just proud of that, that, you know, that I just get up. You know, it's hard to get up and say, I don't want to get out of bed today. You just got to fight to get out of bed. You know, I get over and I feel like a shower. You got to fight to have a shower. You know, just, do it, yeah. <laughs> I, mean, you know, like, I think it gives you me a little sense of achievement, yeah. You know, a sense of, yeah. You know. um, but um, that's a person, but you know, I don't know. What about um, what about what weaknesses have you had to work on, or do you still need to work on? Oh, plenty of weaknesses. Yeah, you know, my first weakness is acknowledging my weaknesses, knowing I have weaknesses. Yeah. You know? I'm working on it every day, acknowledging it and saying, look, you know, you know this is a weakness, you know. My, my working with bureaucrats was a weakness, so I went and enlisted myself in a course so I can build that weakness up, strengthen it up. I didn't go to that, do that course to strengthen up what I'm good at. I went there so they can examine me and I can self-examinate myself and say, okay, Mark, you're good at that, I can work on that. I work on these areas, you know. Yeah, and I want people to tell me what areas I want. So that's my weakness, you know. Looking at my weakness and working on it, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, as you look back over your life, um, what relationships and friendships have been important to you flourishing oh. now and, and yeah. what is it that makes them important? Yeah, look, I, I met, you know, I've met three people in my life that's changed my life. Four people, yeah. First of all, my uncle, Uncle Colin, and my trustees, yeah. Bruce Corlett, Andrew Chalk, and uh, 
Mel Morton. Those four people have been, yeah, and been um, yeah, the pillars of it, of my you know, like talk about support, friendship, you know, mentorship, guidance. Yeah, I I've, I hit the jackpot, right? Yeah, and and I, I've been blessed. You know, God saved me some people that managed to, you know, like you look at me and say, hey, look, you know, I managed to pull my bootstraps and. No, I had some really good you know, support. Not in a not in a wife or anything, but yeah, you know, it's just people who are deeply concerned about my welfare, deeply concerned about yeah, you know, you know, my journey. And they say I'm their inspiration, but not you know, we, we inspire each other, yeah, you know, because you know, for them, you know, they see me battling on, and for me, there are you know, people I can, you know, I can look at and say, look, these are the people I want to be like, you know. And work towards it, you know. Yeah. So, so that was was wasn't all Mark Tonga doing things. It's yeah. Just God sent me some really, really, really good people that were able to. Yeah. I like that though because you're probably underemphasizing your own part there, because you say they've empowered you and given to you, but you've also inspired them, and so it's a, this rich two-way relationship, isn't it? Yeah. You've got to be friendly to get those sort of friends. Well, yeah, just yeah, just grace of God, you know. They, you know, they found, you know, they came, you know, they gave me value back into you know, doing something, you know, like yeah, you know, value myself, value, yeah. You know, they, you know, they, they gave it back to me, you know, and uh, you know, they're giving me that a lot. You know. A lot of um, people who have a spinal cord injury because they've lost the physical ability, they. Um, they get right into um, wheelchair sports or um, in your situation, what are the activities that you do other than your advocacy or your study? Um, that's, the, that's the problem. Uh, that's the problem, Shane. Advocacy and my study is my sport. I use my mind. Yeah. And I love sport. Sporting is real. I grew up playing sport. But because I can't do it physically, my battlefield of my game is yeah, is Gladys, is yeah, is Scott Morrison, is all those bureaucrats, because yeah, just getting the win yeah, you know, getting trained up, getting prepared, getting for the ambush yeah, you know, that's you know, getting that lift is like, yeah, that's it yeah, getting the next lift is sport. I love that. Yeah. And yeah, and that's just me rephrasing the whole thing and re yeah dictating the whole game, you know, like, you know, you know, they use their bodies, I use my mind, yeah. Prior to that, I was using my brawn instead of my mind to play, yeah. <laughs> Kept running into walls, but I thought, you know, now I can't do it. I'm exercising the muscle between my ears, you know. Yeah. Every email I press send, mate, I was like, yeah, it's a trap, mate. it's coming. <laughs> Strategizing, you yeah. know, framing. I told you my secret now, so yeah. <laughs> the secret's out. But that is my sports shame. Brilliant. I mean, you still are connected to us. I see photos of you often with rugby. How you, um... One of my sports, when I came to the South Sea, we lobbied the government. We got about half a million dollars to, you know, to um, renovate this house. I told you it was a piece of shit. I came here, it was like, dump. And I said, okay, let's play, yeah. And we... Took us about two, three years. Lobbied, lobbied, and then praise the Lord, they moved us out to Ferguson Lodge when he came to see me, and they renovated the whole thing, timber floors, painted the walls. Yeah, but more than half a million dollars. Yeah, it's brilliant. Then every time I look at it, this is my trophy. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's the best trophy one you get to live in. <laughs> too bad I don't have it. Oh, it's fantastic. But it's um, yeah, that's my sport. Any. Any, any, you know, as you say, I'm a fighter, you know, anything that's too hard or impossible or, you know, or, you know, I can't do or, you know, okay, new game, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's brilliant. Well, look, um, we're getting near the end of time, so I'll ask you a question. I think I've, I've already guessed the answer to this one, but, um, and you and I have actually talked about this years ago, um, but if you had your life again and could... 
um, go back to that rugby training session and not um, you know, miss the session that day mm-hmm. so to avoid the spinal cord injury, yeah. would you go back in time and change that? No. No. Because you know, I wouldn't have met the people I've met now. I wouldn't have grown stronger spiritually. I wouldn't have gone to, wouldn't have thought about doing an MBA. I wouldn't have, you know, all this is the price of a you know, spinal and it was a heavy price to pay for it. But it was a price that, you know, if I didn't pay for it, you know, it would have been a different mark. It would have been you know, a mark who, you know, was selfish, who was, you know, looking inwards, who was, you know, not productive to the community. Didn't think about you know growing spiritually. Didn't think about growing mentally. And it was just consuming. It would have been just taking and not giving. You know, yeah, you you were interested in me yesterday. This is an opportunity. You wouldn't have been interested in me if I was in the chair. If I was just walking on the street there. You wouldn't want to talk to me. You know, like I've met some inter- done some interesting projects. And you know, like my life, you know, like. You know, has opened up another world for me, you know, this injury, you know, like, you know, I met some, you know, met the Premier, I wouldn't even met the Premier. I would have been stuck in the Western suburbs still, you know, eating fried chicken, mate, you know, like, <laughs> you know, I met the Premier, you know, I wouldn't have met the Prime Minister, met, you know, Prince William, you know, oh, Prince William, yeah, Prince William, didn't meet him, he walked past me, I went to say hello, but you know, the guards got in front of me, bastards, you know, could have got a selfie with him, you know, like, <laughs> you know, all the opportunities that came with this chair, you know, like I know everyone's not the same experience with me, you know, like, you know, they're not, you know, I know people in chairs, you know, who are struggling and, you know, and, um, you know, and their story's not, you know, I'm not saying my, you know, you're going to have my story and my life, you know, but, uh, you know, the grace of God and, I don't know, you know, it's just, you know, this, this wheelchair here has got me, you know, to places I've never even been to, but, yeah. Met the governor, I yeah, went to the governor's house. Think I would have got there with no shit? Yeah, Barclays. <laughs> yeah, it's just, this wheelchair here has opened up doors for me. Yeah. Um, I'm sure that's true, but also because of who you are and who you become, it's a combination of both. A combination of both, and I say not everyone, but, you know, like, you know, it, it it was it was a heavy price to pay, and yeah, and, I, and it was worth it. And you know, like yeah, I look at people running, and you know, like yeah, you know, I miss going for a swim. You know, a lot of things I miss. You know, and but I just like you know, oh, well, you know, those idle times. You know, you flip black. You know, like you know, going for a bushwalk. You know, yeah, or you know, fishing. You know, like yeah, there's many things, but those are just. Idle things, but you know, like, you know. you've been able to access the deeper things. Absolutely, not you near, know, not you know, horizontal, but very vertical, you know? And it's those deep experiences that I've had, yeah, you know, which I've, I've never experienced walking, you know, like, and you know, when you're walking, you need to be. I don't think I would have found it, yeah. So if you um, we'll finish up now. But if you had to give any advice to a person who's struggling in that sort of early stages of the injury, trying to work out how to adjust, what would be your one sort of main piece of advice for them? Yeah, look, um, you know, it's a very you know, challenging time, the early times of the injury, and I just you know, pray to God that you know, you'll find your way through, you know, just keep walking through, you know, get that cloud over you, you know, there's a cloud over you and a lot of things are happening, but you know, just Keep waking up, keep going, you know. You know you'll get, you'll get out of the tunnel, you'll get out of it. You know, I think that's for me is the last word, just, just keep going forward. And if you hit a wall, just go sideways, go over it, just keep going forward. One foot at a time, one day at a time, and you will start getting clearer, brighter and better, you know. So I think that's probably something I can leave with your clients. Don't give up. Thanks for your time, Mark. Really appreciate it.